Hello friends, welcome to Quicklearn tutorial series. In this video, I will explain you operation of class C commutation. This is lecture number 46 A of power electronics series. So let's start with the topic. Before I discuss class C commutation of SCR, we must know about what do you mean by commutation. Commutation is basically a process of turning off any device. Or in terms of SCR, we can say that the turning off process of SCR is known as SCR commutation. There are basically two types of commutation technique. First is natural commutation and second is force commutation. Uh, so class C commutation is come under the category of force commutation. In case of force commutation, we turn off SCR forcefully with the help of external circuitry. So here we use class C commutation circuit to turn off the SCR. That is why it is called class C force commutation technique. Okay. Now class C commutation is also known as voltage commutation because in this technique here we apply a reverse bias voltage across the thyristor and thyristor get turned off. That is why it is called voltage commutation. Class C commutation is also known as complementary commutation because here we see in the circuit diagram of class C commutation. Here we use two thyristor T1 and T2. First we turn on T1 thyristor by applying a gate current and T1 thyristor get turned on. If we want to turn off the T1 thyristor, gate pulse is given to T2 thyristor and T2 thyristor get turned on. If we want to turn off T2 thyristor, we apply gate triggering pulse to T1 thyristor and T1 thyristor get turned on. So this complementary action will perform here that is why it is called complementary commutation. Here we see class C commutation is also known as complementary commutation because as I have already told first we turn on T1 thyristor to turn off T1 thyristor gate pulse is given to thyristor T2 and to turn off thyristor T2, gate pulse is given to thyristor T1. So this is the complementary action will be performed here. That is why class C commutation is known as complementary commutation. Okay. Now circuit diagram of class C commutation. This is the circuit diagram of class C commutation. Class C commutation is basically a type of force commutation. And in any force commutation circuitry, the supply voltage is DC supply voltage. So this is the reason we use DC supply voltage Vs at the input side. Here we use two thyristor T1 and T2. T1 is the main thyristor and T2 is the complementary thyristor. Here we use a commutating component capacitor in between two thyristor T1 and T2. Here we also use two registers R1 and R2. So this is the whole circuit description of class C commutation. Now we move on the working of class C commutation. Now we move on the working of class C commutation. Initially we assume that both the thyristor T1 and T2 is turned off. So both thyristor is behave like a open switch and Initially, voltage across capacitor is 0, Vc equals to 0 because there is no path of current to flow across the circuit. Then, first we turn on T1 thyristor by applying gate triggering pulse. When we apply gate triggering pulse to T1 thyristor, T1 get turned on. So, there are two loops through which current flow through the T1 thyristor. First loop is current flow through supply voltage R1 register. T1 thyristor and back to the supply voltage. This is loop 1 and the second loop is current flow from supply voltage R2 register through capacitor T1 thyristor and back to the supply voltage in this direction. This is loop 2. So the current flow through loop 1 is called I1 current and this current is Vs by R1. Okay. Now current flow through loop 2 is called I2 current and I2 current equals to Vs by R2. So the total current flow through the T1 thyristor is equals to I1 plus I2 Vs upon R1 plus Vs upon R2. 
This is the total current flow through T1 high resistor. Now here we see in the circuit diagram when current flow through loop 2 from resistor R2 through capacitor, capacitor start charging. When capacitor is charged, the current through loop 2 get decreases. When capacitor is fully charged with supply voltage Vs, the current through loop decreasing to 0. And when loop 2 current decreasing to 0, how much current flow through T1 thyristor this time? So T1 thyristor current is equal to the loop 1 current that is equals to Vs by R1. This time loop 2 current becomes 0 because capacitor is fully charged with Vs supply voltage. And when capacitor fully charged with Vs supply voltage, current across loop 2 is decreasing to 0. So the total current flow through T1 this time equal to Vs by R1. So when capacitor is fully charged with Vs supply voltage, the polarity across capacitor is right side plate is positive and left side plate is negative and capacitor charged with Vs supply voltage. This time this polarity of capacitor will turn off T1 thyristor because the negative of capacitor is connect from the anode of the T1 thyristor that will make T1 thyristor turn off. Now we apply a gate triggering pulse to T2 thyristor and T2 thyristor get turned on and behave like a closed switch. Now we have to calculate how much current flow through the T2 thyristor. When T2 thyristor is turned on, so there are two loops through which current flow through the T2 thyristor. One loop is from supply voltage R2 register T2 thyristor and back to the supply voltage. This is loop 1 through which current flow through the T2 thyristor. And the second loop is supply voltage R1 register capacitor T2 thyristor and back to the supply voltage. This is loop 2. So initially total current flow through T2 thyristor is current flow through loop 1. How much current flow through loop 1? Vs by R2. This much current. Okay, through R2 register. Current flow through loop 2. So the total current flow through loop 2 is 2 Vs by R1. Why it is 2 Vs? Because Vs supply voltage and capacitor is also charged with Vs voltage. So the total voltage is Vs plus Vs 2 Vs by R1. Initially the total current flow through the T1 thyristor is Vs by R2 plus 2 Vs by R1. Now here we see in the diagram when current flow through loop 2 capacitor is again charged with polarity left side plate is positive and right side plate is negative because current flow through loop 2 in this direction. So capacitor again charged with supply voltage Vs but this time the supply voltage Vs polarity is negative. So when capacitor start charging with Vs voltage, slowly slowly current across capacitor start decreasing and once capacitor is charged with minus Vs voltage completely, the current through loop 2 is decreasing to 0. Here I mention once capacitor is charged with plus Vs to minus Vs voltage, current through loop 2 is 0. This time only current will pass through T2 thyristor is through resistor R2 from loop 1 that is equals to Vs by R2. Loop 2 current is 0. So the total current through T2 thyristor is Vs by R2. And the polarity across capacitor this time is left side plate is positive and right side plate of capacitor is negative. And capacitor is charged with minus Vs voltage. Now when capacitor is charged with minus Vs voltage, the polarity across capacitor is this, this time this polarity of capacitor will turn off T2 thyristor because the anode of T2 thyristor is connected from the negative of the capacitor that will make T2 thyristor turn off and T2 thyristor behave like a open switch. This time again we apply gate triggering pulse to T1 thyristor and T1 thyristor again start conducting. Again current flow through T1 thyristor from two loop. One loop is through R1 register, R1, T1 and back to supply voltage and the second loop is through R2 register, capacitor, T1 thyristor and back to supply voltage. 
it means again we come to its initial condition so this is the whole working of class c commutation if you like video please like subscribe and share my channel for notes please visit my website the link of the website i will give in my description box and i display here also www.quick-learn.in hello friends welcome to quick learn website and i am very excited to inform you that in quick learn i have recently launched my website that is www.quick-learn.in this website is especially for all the engineering and diploma student and those students who will preparing for competitive exams so in the blog section of the website you can find the notes of all the electrical and electronic subjects just like basic electronics microcontroller microprocessor power electronics and slowly slowly i will add more notes in the website and if you are preparing for any government competitive exams then check also my mcq series that is multiple choice question series and previous year question papers that will help you in your competitive exams here i also upload the quiz test or mock test for ongc up pcl or for different type of competitive exam previous year question papers or for latest update please join my telegram channel the link of my telegram channel i will give in my description box so stay continue and keep watching and keep visiting my website